Welcome to Art for All Ages Online. Today is video number one. This is the number one video that will teach you all the tricks of the trade so that you too can paint with the Art for All Ages method wherever you are. We're gonna go over a wide variety of things, but we're gonna start by painting today what we refer to as the number one painting. This is the number one painting that we came up with when we started Art for All Ages in our initial studio where we started our classes. This is the number one painting. This is the painting we're going to show you how to do today and we're going to walk you through it as always one simple step at a time. It will utilize the three basic motions with the sponge. As you remember, motion number one is just simply back and forth. Motion number two is pat. We'll show you where, when, and how to pat with your sponge. Motion number three is a pat and a short stroke. A pat and a short stroke. That's it. Those three motions and a very little bit of brushwork, the whole painting will be done today. When I said brushwork, this is the brush that we will be using over and over again for today's painting, but it will never touch our painting today. We will simply use it to mix up the color and clean out the brush. Mix up the color and clean out the brush. That's what we'll use this brush for over and over again. The painting part of the program will utilize this small brush to paint just the physical tree. And when we get there, we'll show you how that's done. Today's painting will utilize the basic setup for our painting. This is a standard watercolor piece of paper. It is 9 by 12 inches. It is acid free and you can find this online from our supply list. This is also our basic drawing board which you can also find from our supply list online. This drawing board has a clip and you'll notice that it is on the right side of the painting. The reason for that is because I am left-handed. If you are right-handed, what you want to do is you want to turn the board around so that when you are using your right hand, it's not on the clip. You also want to move your paints onto the right side of your painting area. We'll turn that around again for me. And there we go. Now we have the basic setup. What we're going to start off with as we almost always do, is the color yellow. No matter what your painting palette looks like, whether you're using one that looks like ours or one that you got from our other online supply list, we're gonna be calling the colors by their basic names. We'll use the large brush to simply mix up a bright, bright yellow that you have in your palette. Now what you will notice is that we will go back and forth from using the brush to mix the color and the sponge to do the painting. What we're going to be doing now is we're going to be showing you how to utilize this sponge. You may use this sponge with the number one motion just simply back and forth like we have talked about. But watch the magic trick. One, two, three. Did you see what I did? I took the sponge from this direction and I turned my wrist into this position. Sometimes we will turn our wrist into this position so that we get a large broad area covered into the painting surface. Sometimes we will use the sponge in this position and therefore we can just get a small area that way. Sometimes we will point the sponge directly at the painting to get a small thin line with the sponge. So some, several different techniques, several different techniques to how you turn the sponge to utilize the number one motion. Now, we've mixed up the paint. We're gonna put the sponge into the paint. And again, we'll just use the number one motion with the broad term to just pull across the painting. Once we have covered the bottom half of the painting, 
with the bright yellow color. We will wet the tip of our sponge, squeeze it out, and then we will soften up what we've painted. What we're trying to do is we're trying to get a nice even balance and we're trying to avoid what I refer to as a line. See how this is a soft gradation? How this shifts from the dark yellow into the light yellow? That's what we're looking for. We're talking about three steps. Each and every one of the three moves have three subset categories of how to utilize them. The number one motion, you're going to be doing three things. You will, number one, you will put the sponge into the paint. Number two, you will paint with your sponge. Number three, you will wet the tip of your sponge, you will squeeze it out, and then you will soften up what you painted. Now that we have seen that, we're gonna do the exact same thing again. We're only gonna change two simple things. We're gonna change the color, and we're gonna change the location. So we'll go ahead and clean out our sponge. And what we're gonna do to start off with is we're going to mix up a new color. We're gonna utilize a blue color, and again, it doesn't matter from your palette which blue you use. I'm gonna use a type of a Prussian blue here, which I really like. And if you wanna add a little green to make it a little more aqua, that's fine. If you wanna add a little bit of the Payne's Gray to bump it up, that's okay too. If you add a little of the purple, that makes it a little bit more on the periwinkle side. Now, before we put our sky into the painting, let us talk about what we're going to do here. A very, very common mistake. People will add the blue across the painting's top and they bring it all the way down to the yellow and then they try to blend it in. It's a disaster. The trick of this is to only put about two fingers worth of the blue paint into the top half of the painting so that you still have some white area down here. Then, after you have wet the sponge's tip, squeezed it out, then you can soften that up and blend it into the yellow. We're also gonna be talking about a very finesse move. It's a finesse move. You don't have to use it, but eventually you will learn this move, and it is what we call the lift. The lift is utilized with the number one motion, and the lift is going to be wonderful to create all kinds of wonderful aspects of our painting. It is a little tricky and some paintings cannot be done until you have mastered the lift. You may want to practice this on your own from time to time. Let me be clear, when you pull the sponge across the page and you lift straight up, this is not the lift. The lift is like a plane that is taking off the runway and slowly lifts off the painting. Again, slowly lifting off the painting. That's what we're looking for. And let me show you what happens. I have the blue onto the sponge now. I'm gonna be at the top of the painting. It doesn't matter if you start on the left or start on the right, but it should matter that you start on the edge of the tape, actually putting the sponge on the tape. So when the tape is removed, we get a nice clean line. Now, this is a little dry. Let me dry this out. Okay, once you have the color there, the lift, looks like this. Ah, see this feathered tapered feel? That is the lift. And it will allow us, after we wet the tip of the sponge and squeeze it out, it will allow us to now softly blend that into the rest of the sky. And look at that, we have some wispy clouds that are going across the painting. If you feel like you want your sky to have a little bit more color, you can lift across the other direction. If you're having difficulty lifting in one way or the other, turn your painting around so that you can do the lift in the direction that fits best for you, that's most comfortable. We'll clean out our sponge. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to the brush and we're going to mix up a new color. This time, we're gonna mix up a sap green color. You can use all kinds of different colors for this if you want, but I prefer sap green because we're gonna be painting the grass down here. Now we want a fairly large amount of this because the grass is a nice area, so we're gonna mix up a nice batch of that green paint. Now, let me share with you a few other things. This sponge can utilize the number one motion to create the landscape. Do you know what that is? 
Oh, I'm sorry, it's so boring because it's just a straight flat horizon line. What we want to do is we want to add some variation and it's super, super simple. Instead of dragging the sponge across the painting straight away, all we want to do is a slow, meandering, rolling hills to wave the sponge across the painting to give us some hills and some valleys. Now, folks, when you do this, please, please, please do not give me Victorian scallops like the waves of an ocean. That's not what we're looking for. A nice, slow, meandering wave works best. I'll show you how this works. Now, we want our yellow sunset to remain yellow, so we don't want the grass all the way up here. So we want to be low down to the page here, and we're going to put the green right on top of the yellow, but we're going to leave some of the yellow. And see how I wave the sponge across the bottom of the page? And then I can just plow in the rest of the grass there, and that's it. Look how simple that is. We have our sky, we have a sunset, we have clouds, we have a beautiful, beautiful grassy meadow here. We are looking good. What we're going to do now is we're actually going to start to paint the tree itself. Now when we do this, people will say to me, um, yeah, you're going to paint the tree, you're going to pick up the brush. And the answer is no, we're not going to do that. We're actually going to be painting the leaves into the tree first. And I'm going to use a darker green, either a sap green, excuse me, either a hunter's green or an emerald green, and that will bump it up nicely to make it a little bit darker. Now what we're going to do is we're going to follow the directions. You don't need to know why we're going to put the leaves in the tree first. All you need to do is follow the step-by-step -step directions and we will get you through the painting one simple step at a time. What you're going to find out later on as you do more paintings, the reason we don't put the tree into the grass now is because the grass is wet. You don't need to know that, you just need to know, follow the step-by-step -step directions and you'll be fine. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put the leaves into the tree and we're going to utilize the second motion of our program. The second motion is going to be pat. We're going to pat with our sponge. Now again, there are three subset categories that we need to know about patting to make sure that we get it right. Rule number one, make sure that you squeeze your sponge tight. Squeeze your sponge tight so that it is nice and dry. If your sponge is too wet, this does not work well. Rule number two, when you're patting with your sponge, is do not boom, boom, boom. Bang hard, 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 hard onto your painting. You want to be soft, you want to be gentle. When you hold your sponge, notice where my finger is. This is very common. This is where we want it, on the back. We don't want it down here. We want it up here on the tip of the sponge, but we don't want it over the side of the sponge either. We want it on the back to give it some spine. But what you're going to notice is if you feel that finger pounding into your painting, you are patting way, way, way too hard. You want to be soft. You want to be gentle. Kiss it like it's your sister. Be very, very gentle when you do it. And the third rule about patting with your sponge, and this is very important, please, please, please do not pat the same pat again, 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 again. Ugh. It's boring. And it will look like tire tracks going across your painting. Trust me, it doesn't look right. There's a simple way to avoid this. In one word, random. We want to be randomized with our patting. Now, let me show you random. When you pat, you will pat with the sponge, you will lift, you will turn your wrist. You will pat with the sponge, lift. Turn your sponge and wrist into another direction, pat. Turn into another direction, pat. Each time you are hitting the paper, you are getting a different cornered facet of the tip of your sponge in order to make a randomized pattern. Now when we do this, we want it here in the sky area for the tree. It doesn't matter if you put the tree on the left or the right, it's your painting. I'm going to go ahead and choose to put it on this side of the painting here, and I'm very softly and very randomly going to put the leaves into the tree that I want for today's painting. Make it kind of like a little bit like an umbrella shape. That usually works really well. And that just gives me an idea of where we want to have the tree. 
we're going to come to the part of the painting process now where we're going to be utilizing the brush. This is without a doubt the most difficult part of every one of our paintings that utilize a brush. There are tons of our paintings that absolutely you will never use a brush for anything other than to mix up the color. But for those paintings that do require a 5 to 10% utilization of the brush, this is the most difficult part. If you need additional assistance with this, we highly recommend that you check out our video on how to use a brush. It's a separate video instruction specifically to give you the trained secrets of how to utilize a brush. Now, we're going to go ahead and we're going to utilize our large brush just simply to mix up the color. We're going to use a rusty brown called Burnt Sienna and we're going to mix it up right on top of where we mixed our blue color for the sky. There's not a problem. If you happen to have a lot of blue there left, it just makes a burnt umber kind of a color. That's fine. If you want to add a little bit of purple into there to bump it up, you can do that. Some Payne's Gray bumps it up. If you want it more on the brown side, add a little bit more of your burnt sienna color, and that will give you more of a brownish color. Now, once you have this color, you're going to be utilizing the brush. Again, I'm going to do something crazy. I'm going to turn the painting upside down. There's a reason why we do this. We turn it upside down. You watch the video on how to paint with a brush and you will learn our secret of why we turn the painting upside down. I'm not going to tell you to do that if you're uncomfortable with it, but for me it works great. We paint a lot of trees in our program and often people will ask us, how do you paint trees, Steve? And I will say, why? And they shake their head, no, 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 no. I asked you a question, what's the answer? I wanna know how to paint trees. And my answer is why? Would you like to see why? Let me show you why. When you come to paint the tree, you start it here in the grass and you pull up into the sky and you create why. This is why. You want to know why we use that shape? It's because it looks the most natural and it works very well. In fact, when you go to branch off the rest of the branches, when you look at the tree, it is simply extensions of small, tinier and tinier little Y's. And if you follow that rule for painting your trees, you will have a tree that looks far more natural. We want to avoid something called the devil's pitchfork. We talk about that in how to paint with a brush video. Now, all trees have one very important rule. They must be thicker at the bottom than they are at the top. I'm gonna to turn the painting around now and just come back and make the base of the tree a little bit thicker. There we go. Don't worry about the root system. We'll deal with that a little bit in a few minutes. From this point on, the rest of this painting is done with the mixing of the color with this brush and this sponge. There is no more paintbrush needed to do any of the painting for today's painting. That was the hardest part of today's painting and we're going to put that brush away. And we're going to go back now with the large brush and we're going to mix up a new color. Now we already have a green here in the leaves of the tree, but we're going to remember an old saying that is variety is the spice of life. Therefore, we want some variety in our painting. So we mixed up a different color of green, this time a sap green. We're going to go back with the sponge and we're going to just softly pat again, randomly and softly pat some of that green into the tree to add some foliage into it. That gives us some nice variety there. I like that, that looks good. Now, we'll clean out the sponge. This is not art school. This is important. We are not here to teach you how to become a Rembrandt or a Van Gogh or to be an illustrator of any kind. Most people, all they care about is how do I make my painting look better? 
They don't want to know what is light object theory. They don't want to understand what is line quality or clairosierra or any of these other fancy designer terms that come from art school. You want to learn about that? Go to art school. It's a great place to be. But just in these classes, you need to understand we're here to make it simple so that everybody can paint. All you have to do is follow our directions one step at a time and we will get you through the painting. What we're going to be doing now is we're going to create a shadow. Again, we're not going to give you the details of how to create shadows for light theory, but we want to be able to make our painting look right. And to do that, we're going to mix up a dark color from the Payne's Gray. We're going to add that to our sponge and right where the branches tips are touching the bottom of the bough of the tree, we're going to softly again and randomly paint with a patting motion some shadow into the bottom of the tree. Now, now what we're going to do is we're going to use the third and final motion for our program. This motion is again a pat and a short horizontal stroke. A pat and a short horizontal stroke. Every time we do this painting, we run into the same problem for everybody's painting. The tree right now is floating in the middle of the meadow. What we want to do is create a shadow here at the bottom to ground the painting and make it look like it's really there. This is the third motion. We're going to point the sponge right at the painting and very softly pat that dark color with the third motion, a pat and a short horizontal stroke. We're also going to do another trick. Watch this. I'm going to turn the sponge around to the butt end of the sponge and we're going to utilize the soft end of that to just blend in by scrubbing some of that darker color into the painting. I'll add a little bit more darkness here and scrub that in on the back end of the sponge again and that's looking good. We are almost finished. What we're going to do now is we're going to get you loaded. Not what you think. This is a very old art technique about loading your brush, or in this case, loading your sponge. And the way it's utilized is both the sponge and the brush in concert with each other. We're going to put a large amount of the paint color onto the tip of the brush, and we're then going to take our sponge and we're going to paint it onto the tip of the sponge. We're going to put the brush down, and then we're going to take the sponge and we're going to go bang. We're going to put the tip of that sponge right into that color and it will load a large amount of that color to get some real strong punch into the painting that we're looking for. So here's how this is done. We're going to load the brush. We have our yellow that we have and it's nice and strong on the brush. We're going to put it right here and paint it right onto the tip of the sponge. Put the brush down and if you need to, you can also put the sponge bang right into the paint. Now our sponge is loaded. We will then very softly pat this color into the top canopy of the bow of the tree. We don't want it up here in the sky because that will give us a halo, like an angel. We don't want that. So we're going to just softly pat this yellow into the top of the tree. Oh, look at that beautiful sunshine brightness into the top of the tree there. We'll also add just a few little pats here at the bottom underneath the tree for some fallen leaves and that's it. Now that pretty much finishes off our painting. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the brush. This is optional. You do not have to do this if you do not want to. What we're going to do is we're going to add birds into the painting. If you're not sure how to do this, watch our instructional video that's on how to paint trees and how to use a brush and it will be included in that particular instructional video. We're going to go ahead and we're going to utilize this small brush and we're going to add some very tiny, tiny birds into the painting. Now we've come to the end of our particular painting. When we started, the yellow paper tape looked really pretty. 
now it's pretty ugly. We want to remove it. This is our favorite part of every class. It's what we call the unveiling. We're going to actually take this tape off of the painting. Now when you do this, it's very important that you be careful. You do not want to rip your painting. I like to crawl this off of the painting rather than just to pull long, straight, long rows of it. Just softly, softly crawl it off the painting. Here, you can see here how I'm going to just crawl that tape off of the painting. The other thing that you want to do is you always want to make sure that when you are pulling the tape off, that you pull the tape off away from the painting. You never want to pull the tape into the painting for fear that you might accidentally rip it. Once the tape is removed, the beautiful white border is revealed, and so is your painting. This is painting number one with Art for All Ages Online. We hope you enjoy it and enjoy all the rest of our videos available through subscription. Thank you. Thank you for watching our video. If you enjoyed this video, check out our full library for more videos with our sponge painting system at artforallagesonline.com. Or if you're interested in live art classes for you or your community, check us out at artforallages.com. We wish you well in all your artistic endeavors. Thank you.